and we are recording. Awesome. So now again, I lost my, okay, there you go. So um, the, the dashboard, let me move this here. Da, 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 da. There you go. So the dashboard, the important of the, of the dashboard and why I'm so excited about this part, because you guys know that as a coach, I think that it's very important and you're always, always mindful of where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, hardly you will make it there. So the function of the dashboard that seems at this moment so boring is that it will allow you for you to see where you are as far as your financials, as far as your transactions, your volume, and your pipeline, which I call pipeline, which is a projection of where are you gonna make money based on the transactions you have in pending, okay? So I want you to go to actions. I mean, if you're not watching, don't worry because it will be recorded. And the one thing you do, you go to add a widget, okay? On the widget, you can either have the contracts added, how many contracts have I added this month, this year, this week, or this quarter, okay? Or you have a bunch of options, like contracts with activity, contacts, I'm sorry, it's contacts, not contracts. Contacts with activity, contacts with um, added, people that I have email, transactions, income, transactions, volume, okay? And that's something for us. So let's say that you have a transaction income, okay? You wanna know how much money you're making, right? So you will have that. And you can have it by month, okay, quarter, like I mentioned, you have all these options. And you also can say what I have acted, pending, and close. So this is important for your financial, guys. Remember, you need if, as much information as you have. And I know that some of you might say, well, I have nothing. Well, guess what? Now is a very good thing that every time you open this transaction, you see zero. So it motivates you to really go after that client, okay? So um, let's see, I'm going to pick on volume because I like sales volume because sales volume allows you to keep on looking to what you're doing and you can have it like this month, right? Account, in this case, I have a different uh, thing than you because I can look at everybody. I'm gonna put me, so you know, nobody needs to see anybody else. And as you know, I'm not a, I'm, I don't act as an agent, so I have zero. But if I had any, I will, it will be showing there. I can have as many widgets as I want. I can add different ones and put different colors and you know, um, income on transactions. I can change the color. I wanna have it on, I don't know, I wanna have it on blue. And again, it's me. Okay, and by the way, yes, my name is Dolores, but nobody calls me that. So that can keep on populating. And if you change it, like you come to the pen and you say, you know what, I wanna see now not only this month, but what I have pending, because I really wanna be motivated to see what's coming. So any contracts that are pending, that are not being closed, it will show there. Are we clear on that? One person that says yes, and I can move forward. I will answer, remember the Q&A will be at the end. So that's your calendar. The other thing that you can see, and this is where I can see everything, you will see here on the calendar, all the dates that you have put in your contracts and this is great when i go and talk about the dates on then in the future now like in a few minutes remember that you will be able to see those things in your calendar so forget about oh my god i forgot about the you know uh one is the inspection period ending on this transaction because this program is meant to be your virtual assistant okay for no cost because you're part of optimer so this is really to be able to help you. Now, I'm gonna show you what I see. If I go here and I go to Opto International Brickle, I see, this is my calendar, you see? I can see you guys all over. I can click and again, it helps me a lot and I'm gonna mention this because if I have like, well, let me go to this one. This is, I know that who, I even know who the realtor is because I know you guys by transaction. So I have 595 Glenbridge. So that I can relate. Even if one of you calls me and says, hey, what is going on with my transaction? Because I say, yeah, you're right. You have a deadline tomorrow, right? Whatever deadline that is, I need to go and check, but I can see it. Now, if I have transaction of John Smith, as you can see, everything, because this place is small, it just looks as transaction. So please, 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 just, I will, you will make me very, very happy if by tomorrow, all of you, whatever transactions you have, you go and 
delete the transaction name and add it there the address so your transaction will be labeled by the address okay so but this is for me and this is also for you you guys will have your own transactions not only mine so let's start by the important part how can we start a transaction so let's put the case you're working with a client right let's call the client carolina so carolina is my client and we already got together we saw a property she really likes and she wants to put a contract so we already know there is a rental and then she's the tenant okay so what i do i come to my um total brokerage and i go to crm and i'm going to add a contact why because everything starts with the contact so i'm going to put here one of my so many uh, fictitious names um i'm gonna put here I'm gonna put here. I'm gonna put here. I put Mickey Mouse already. I put Bell. I'm gonna put um. What I'm gonna put? Jasmine. By the way, she's my friend, but now she's gonna be Jasmine. She's going to be Jasmine. Uh, Jasmine Ocean. So she's. I don't mess up with her. And I have her email. I always put myself. I'm gonna put my personal one. So okay, there you go. And okay, of course I have it. Yes. Right, let me check with this. Okay, this is a good thing because it's a good thing that just happens. So listen to this. In this case, right, and what happens when we're working and someone else has already worked with that contact? So this is a moment in which it says, I'm using an email, which is my own, which actually Michael, which is an agent from my office, he's using my email because he's sending me material, which is okay, I allow him to do that. So what happens is that look at the message on the top. It says, this contact might be similar or identical to multiple other contacts, please consult Dolores Aurino slash, Mar I mean, Michael's, I mean, for me to contact Michael because he's using it, okay? So if you get this message, is sometimes when you have a client that he never actually told you that he's working with someone else and he's trying to just work with you now, but just to, so clients sometimes do these things that they start working with one agent and then they jump to work with another and they don't notify anybody. So this is a way just for you to know, okay? And then, you can have a conversation with someone else, but you know now that this client has been, you know, working with other people. So it's just for that purpose, okay? So I'm going to keep on moving and, hold on, let me move the chat. I'm gonna do save. So what happens as soon as I save, now I have, you know, as in the CRM, Jasmine Ocean is there. So what am I gonna do with Jasmine Ocean? Well, I'm going to create a transaction. So you're going to action, okay? And you start by creating a transaction. Okay, and then you come to the wizard. The wizard has a very specific purpose. The wizard wants to know what kind of transaction you wanna have so he can get all the forms you're going to need for that transaction. So we started by saying that it was gonna be a tenant so it's gonna be a tenant, 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 tenant. Okay, tenant, and I want you to see this. You have a tenant for commercial property, or you have a tenant for residential, referral, whatever. So in this case, it's a residential property. So is the, uh, is the property built before 1978? We all know why is that, I'm not gonna go over, but in this case, no. Um, is If you're representing the buyer, the property, blah, 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 it has an HOA, or a condo, I'm gonna say that no, I'm gonna make it simple, it's a house. So, and if you're representing a buyer, is this transaction going to qualify for COPA? No, but if I want, I can click here and it will say yes. Same here, let me show you the options. You have a bunch of options, okay? So you need to know which one it is that applies to your transaction. And this is the part that I always stop, breathe in and read, guys, just read, it says, after answering all above questions, click the blue link on the bottom right to create a transaction. On the following screen, be sure to review the task tab, which is the last one, for compliance and step-by-step -step instructions. I am reading this because I love repetition. Repetition is the mother of skills. So why am I saying this? because I can check all your transactions and I have seen too many with that tab that it has not been reviewed. So we're gonna do it today so you can remember. So you go and create a transaction. In this case, and let me 
stop here for a second. I'm going to create a transaction with the blue button. Why? Because I'm actually starting from a new. I'm not bringing files from app files because I already did that, right, a few weeks ago. So I'm starting from a new. In the case that you are bringing a transaction that it was not finalized on app files and you're translating that transaction to app total brokers, you will have to come here because that way the system will not auto create the forms and you will basically just upload the forms, okay? But for the purpose of this training, we're gonna go here. So the system takes a little while to basically just find the files. And here we are. So you see what I was talking about, Jasmine, the ocean? I don't wanna see transaction for Jasmine or transaction for Carolina or transaction for whoever. I want you to come here and just add the address. I'm not gonna do it right now because I need to remember that this is a training. Uh, if I put an address, I'm gonna forget. So, uh, but you will come here, right? Actually, I can do that. I'm gonna put uh, 1000 Brickell Avenue, which is my office address, Avenue, and I'm gonna put here training. So I remember that. Okay, so I have a tenant, remember? And this active, you will never touch on this. This, this thing here, the only person that touches this is Tassie. And that's it right so i'm gonna save it because guess what i changed that so i come here and i save it and i always like to save because i always lose documents because not saving so now we're going to go to what is the first place it's not documents i know that we're tempted to go to the first but you actually go to the last and you click on task now if you have this let me make that very 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 clear if you don't click on that blue button I'm gonna say it out loud. You do not get paid. Am I clear? If you don't click on the blue button, you don't get paid. Why? Because we don't see anything. So first thing you do, you come here and you change it. And I'm gonna go over so you can see a little differences, options that we have. We make a lot of improvement on this section last week with Christina. So now we have, of course, sellers, which reduce the amount of tasks, buyers, lender, tenant, referral fee, I don't know why that is there, and the rental community. I don't know you guys in Sunny, but the people in Brickell, I have a lot of agents that work a lot with rental communities. So rental communities, you just need an invoice. So that's why you don't need a bunch of other documents that all the other transactions need. So let me show you how it works. So you click on here, you click on save, and all of a sudden, you only have two tasks to comply. So I'm going to take the opportunity to, in this moment to explain you two things. This, the lease agreement by the community is ideal, but I know that sometimes you don't get it. So since we know that you might not get it and we don't want that to be a, you know, a blockage into you getting paid, you can bypass it. When you bypass it, the turtle moves, but the activity is not needed. Now the invoice request, that's a little hiccup that we have. We need to fix it because you do need an invoice request. So what happens if, in this case, you represent the tenant, right? And it's just a regular tenant. Now I have a bunch of other documents. Can you see? Okay, so we're gonna go over this. So now that I have this done, I can start looking at my list and say, okay, what do I need to do first, right? So there's two documents that will come together in a way. One is the verified property information from a pro from property appraiser which basically translate to go to IMAP on the MLS and just print or save as a copy the uh, IMAP sheet which has all the information of the property. So that's what it means. You need to basically get on IMAP, save it as a PDF, download it the computer, upload it here. Why? Because not only you have a bunch of information you're going to need to add into people and property, but it's also a way for us to have all those documents in case that is needed, okay? And why, if you ask me why is it gonna be needed? Well, because guess what? People sometimes and DBPR might come and ask questions all of a sudden with no specific reason and we need to have everything there. Now, look at this one. Proof of ownership, deed, trust, or corporation documents. This has a bypassing symbol. Why? Because unless you're using, or the person that you're, you know, your tenant is having uh, the rental done by a corporation, you don't need to use this thing. 
but okay, if you have a, who is active? I'm gonna. Uh, uh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, can you hear me? Because for whatever reason, there was someone that hopefully I'm not muted. Virginia, can you can you hear me? Anybody can hear me? Say yes. Yes, thank you. Okay, Ricardo. So are we clear here? So unless you have a buyer or a tenant or a seller, okay, or a landlord that is having the property and wants to have the transaction under the corporation, you will not, you will bypass this. If they are doing it by the corporation, you need to have that because you need to have a proof that the person that's going to be signing, it is the principal, you know, authorized to be there. So the other thing you need is the MLS listing active. Why? Well, let me explain to you really simple. The terms of the commission and a lot of, a lot of other things are in that MLS sheet. So we need you to print, to have it as a PDF and upload it to the system. We don't want to go later and let's, you know, and have an issue, a dispute or something and have to be grabbing documents from whatever. So the main purpose of these documents that we're asking for is to be organized, not only for us, but mostly for you. Okay. And I know that might seem like, oh my God, do I have to do this? The question, the answer is yes. So let's go now that I explained this situation. So you, I just wanted to show you this very briefly. We're going to go to the rest. So some of you may be very tempted, and I know this, to go to here. Here are your documents page. All the documents that the system, based on what you put on the wizard, said that you are having, is gonna give you. In this case, it's a house. I only have four. Why? I have the wire fraud, which I always have in case that the client is sending me money via wire. I have the affiliate business in case that I use optimal title. This is a question that people ask. Why do I have that agreement there? Well, because we are, owners, we are partners with uh, Optimal Title, so we need to notify our clients in case that they're using Optimal Title as a title company, that there is affiliation between the companies. That's why the document is there. And of course, this is a very simple house, so I just need the contract to lease and the escrow letter, you know, the escrow letter. And I think I'm missing something, but I'm gonna figure it out later. Okay, so we go to people. Very important part of the transaction. So I have people. So I know that this is me, and I need to stop for a second here. In this lender's agent's name, I need you to put not, in this case, Carolina, okay, from Cervera. I need to put just Cervera. Why? And I know there's his name, but we're trying to fix it with total brokerage for that. Because when we are going to pay, in case that we hold escrow and we have to pay the other side, we need the check to come out of the system as Cervera, because remember, we pay the broker, we don't pay the agent, okay? So that, that's a note, and this is, I know there is this a little land of confusion, especially because it says lands or name, but just remember, now that you've seen me, that here you will put the name of the broker, okay? Being the Cervera, beach, beachfront property, whatever the name might be, okay? So that's it. Now we're going to vendors. So the vendor that I have here is a transaction coordinator. And I explained this in a little video before. The reason here that you have her is because you will need from her, in case I will hold in escrow again, the escrow letter. So I come here and I pick Tassie, okay? And here I have the buyer. In this case, I have the tenant and I can add here the landlord, the seller, the buyer, whatever. If you see, I can come here and change, you see, I can change whoever it is. If I don't have that many, it's just basically removing them. There's no big thing. Okay, so I come here again. I add a Tassie. I save it. Please, that's a habit. I mean, if you keep saving, believe me, you will lose nothing. Now I'm going to property. So this is the important part. And I don't know if I can be sharing my screen at the same time. <clears throat> but remember that I mentioned about the IMAP situation. When you have the IMAP page, you can copy from there the legal description of the property. You will need to add it here. I should have one for the purposes of you looking at this. Let me see if I can remember anybody. Okay, I'm going to, hopefully you can still see my, your screen, your screen. Oh, okay, I know that you're in pause. You cannot see my screen right now, but don't worry about it. I'm just getting into the MLS really fast to open the any 
any any any to get basically in night map and just get the legal description because I do want to show you okay active listings okay that will work let me get this one Okay, and let me get a map. So now we get a map. So from my map, I can really know, and this happened to one of our agents. He happened to have the father on the current owner. He happened not to mention that. So guess what? Little surprise that since it back then, you know, there was no checking on the in the on on the IMAP page. Uh, the the guy just said that he was the only owner, and that when he was put in the contract later, we knew that due to the IMAP situation, there was the father and the son. So he had to prove that the father had died and blah blah blah. So all those. This is why to mention that it's not that we are just mad people. There is a reason for our madness. So let me just copy this, copy, and I'm gonna go back to you guys. Here we are. Can you see my screen right now? Yes, I guess so, right? Are you back? I'm back, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna copy here the legal description. So, and I'm gonna put here the address. In this case, I'm gonna use this one. Um, Brickle Avenue. Yeah. Okay, so I complete all these, right? Comp address, da 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 and do what? I save it again eventually okay so now i go to financials why do i go to financials because there's going to be a part in the contract when we open the documents that you will not be able to fill in you will not be able to do anything and before you get frustrated you need to understand that first what you do is you fill all the tasks i think you can fetch by tamping yes more likely Anastasia, thank you for the comment. Uh, so let's see that we have the rent per month. The rent per month is going to be 2000, right? And the, what else? The rent for Fino, the escrow amount. Oh, we're holding escrow. So I'm gonna put here 2000 because I'm holding the first month. And the total rent full amount will be 24, right? There you go. And blah, blah, blah. So now I need you to pay attention to this. Here you see a percentage, so don't put anything here because this is not meant for, and don't ask me why, because I cannot give you that answer, so we just bypass it and find a solution. So I don't want you to put anything here in these two sections when you're working with a rental, okay? Why? Because we, uh, you might have a half a month, and as you can see, half a month is not here. You just have a uh, 5%, which is the other option you have. Some, some, some rents are based on a 10%, and then it's 5% for one part and 5% to another. But some of you do half a month, some of you do 5%. So, but you just need to put these specific things. So you're gonna come here and save it, okay? And what else am I missing? Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to put here the buyer and I need to put here the seller. Let me add the seller. I'm going to put Bell. Bell is one, I mean, I already have a, a bunch of people that is, you know, as you can see from Disney. So I'm gonna put Bell as a seller, okay? So I have seller, buyer, I have, what else it has? I have the address of the property, right? And I have the financials. So now I can say that I'm ready to go to my documents. So I'm gonna go to my documents. So since I mentioned that I was holding escrow, I can come here, okay, which is something that you all guys request. I need an escrow letter, I need an escrow letter. And as you can see, all the fields are blue. The reason means that if I click, no matter how much I click, I'm not gonna be able to do anything with those fields, okay? Unless the field is red, which means that you can add your specifics of the transaction. Blue means is from the system. So go to your eye, which is on the top, and you see the little eye there, and you click on that. And automatically, look what happens. The escalator is being created. I have my Jasmine, I have the address, 
I have the landlord. Why do I, oh, because I don't think I put it as a landlord. Um, and I have the amount that I have on escrow. So if I don't see anybody here, guess what? I need to go back, okay? Because it's not gonna have an escrow letter. And I need to go to people. And I need to go to, ooh, I didn't save it probably. Bell, oh, it's, just, it's not a seller, it's a tenant, you see? I'm gonna put her as a landlord here, Bell. Okay, so now I save it. Okay, and now, I love making mistakes, <laughs> honestly, because when I make mistakes, at least you see that you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> I make mistakes all the time. Um, okay, so now we come here and it still it shows here. It doesn't matter if it's in the first line or the second because basically that's if you choose one or two. What you can do in the people if you're like very OCD, delete and just leave the, if you have one tenant, just leave one, one person. If you have two, ten, two, two owners, just leave the two names. So that's up to you, but you do that on the tabs of people, okay? But now, the, basically, the escrow letter is completed. Now you have secure tenant. I have people talking. Do it all again. And you have um, the address. So what do I do from here? So I go back, right? I save it. And I go back to the transaction. So in this case, I need to do something else. And it is, might be required, let me think, it's not required by you, I have to do it myself. So I, Dolores, Lola, I'm going to upload, guys, your, I mean, me or someone, whoever, you know, you made the deposit, if you make it in Sunny, well, someone else will do, we will put a copy on your file of the trans, of the funds that have been either wired or um, that they're already, you know, deposited. If you are working with a wire, remember, first you have to send the fraud the wire fraud prevention notice to the tenant, then you have to request that they send you either an email, a photo, something showing that the transaction went through from their side. You will have to upload that into the transaction. So I'm gonna show you right now so we don't go over. So either if it's the wire um, confirmation, you will go to actions, okay, and see all the options. At this moment, you need to upload a PDF, which will be, the proof that, in this case, the client has actually wired the money. I want you to make a pause here. There is no, re can you see that there is nothing saying that you can upload a JPEG? So I did a video, I'm not gonna go right now over how to do that, because I already created a video and I sent it to you guys uh, on how to convert your image into a PDF. You can, I did two videos, one, actually how to do it from your phone and how to do it from your computer. So I'm going to go and upload a, a PDF. So you have to come here, click that, and click Upload. And I have to come here and find something. So here I have, that's not what I'm looking. I do this every single time, but I'm gonna just put it there for the purposes of this training. Wire, I have a wire here. Okay, I have a wire here that someone actually did. So just for this, why well, don't I wanna use that? Because it's, I'm gonna use mine. I'm gonna use my other one, okay. So I'm gonna come here and click on the file which I actually found and I'm gonna choose. And it's gonna be uploaded. So this will be ready, perfect. Now, I mentioned before and I say it all the time, patient is not one of my strongest qualities. So you need to refresh the page because can you see that it's not there yet? So just refresh the page before you start trying to bring it up again. Where do I add the landlord? Oh, I will answer all these questions at the end. So um, commission wire. So now I have it there. So now I'm ready, now I'm ready to request the escrow letter. So I, I'm in the documents page and I need to get a signature. So I'm going to go to, what happened here? To, I'm gonna go to, what, okay, no, 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 no. Okay, so hold on. Okay. Oh, I went out of my transaction. Oh God, who was my transactions names was, what was my transaction name? Did I change my transaction name? 
I don't believe that this just happens to me. So you see, I love mistakes. Let me go back and see if it goes back to, okay, here you go. Okay, thank you, thank you. So I'm back in here, right? So I'm gonna go to actions, and the action I'm gonna do is request signatures. Why? Because I need Jesse to sign my escrow letter. So I go to actions, on the transaction I request signatures. So as soon as you do that, you're gonna, okay. Thank you, thank you, Ricardo. <laughs> so as soon as I'm here, right, and I'm requesting my signature, you see the first question I'm gonna have is who I'm requesting the signature from. So in this case, I'm referring from the signer. So I'm gonna say that I'm requesting it from transactions. Uh -huh. Why this keeps happening? Okay, so look at this. I'm I already put Tassi right, and the only look at the bottom documents to sign. She only has one document to sign, and it's the escrow letter. Now, if I click here and I send it to her, well, I'm going to tell you what happens. She will receive a notification. And after she receives the notification, she will go straight to your transaction. She will click on that email. It will open the transaction and she will go looking for the wire confirmation, the copy of funds or whatever she needs to actually say, yes, we have the money. So that's how it works. That's why it's so important that you do not forget to upload in the case of the wire, the confirmation from your client. Because we receive emails from you guys saying, I need to know if the money is there. And we are going to say, that's beautiful, but we need to know when the money was transferred. Okay, so do your part, and then you send us a little note, and I'm gonna explain you how. So what happens if I, I'm, let's see that I was ready, because I have not worked in the transaction, to send it to my tenant. If I click on the tenant, the request a signature, what is going to happen is look at the documents. Now is another kind of documents. Now the system is telling me, Okay, your tenant has to sign your contract to lease and your wire fraud prevention notice. You see, it's as simple as that. Let's say that you wanna just send the wire prevention notice, you will click here and you will send it to them, right? Or you will come here and send it to them. That's as simple as this requesting a signature is. So let's go back to the transaction. So now let's imagine that I have my Escalator sign, and I'm gonna work on my transaction. So let's go to the contract to lease. Here we are. So, as you can see, there is a lot, I just pick a contract to lease, which has a lot of empty space. All the, everything that is in red, it means that I can actually type. So this is between Bell and my phone. Bell and, I don't remember who, oh, it was Jasmine. Jasmine was mine. So I can, since this is in red, I can start filling all these things. But you see, property address is in blue. I cannot do anything with the blue. Why? Because it's coming from the other side, remember? So I'm gonna start filling all this contract with all the little things that I need to add. I'm not gonna go into that, but you would put everything in your red fields, right? The only thing you can, I mean, even here, and this is something that we need to review, why this is on this in red, but I'm gonna go over that later. I'm gonna make notes of all the things that I need to review. And so I'm gonna go back to the first page because I want you to see what happens here. When I click the I again, I am able to see whatever I put. If I don't fill all the fields in the address, like I didn't, I didn't put the city, the zip code or, or the unit, it will not show up. That's why it's so important that on the documents part, on the property part, you filled everything, okay? So um, you do this, you review that your contract is fine, okay? And then after that, you of course you save it and you're ready to send it. So questions up to here. Use the chat. Okay, Mariel, Mariana, hold on, let me see. Okay, okay. It cannot auto-populate with all the information you already put in. It can't auto-populate with all the information, with all the info you already put in. Uh, I'm not sure I understand your question. When, 
unless there is a mistake and this has happened and I have like landlord's name, etc. No, landlord's name is not. And the reason why, thank you for asking the question, love you to death. Why we allow, while we open the tenant, the landlord and the tenant, I'm going to, I'm going to say it right now. The reason why is because we found a glitch in the system and I love the glitches or hiccups or whatever. I don't like to call it mistakes because they're not. So when we were working with this in total brokerage, we realized that if we have a corporation, and I know that a lot of you with, with international buyers or people that just want to have right property under a corporation, what happens is you, you will put the uh, name of the corporation, I mean, you will put the name of the landlord because that's the client, but it's buying under a corporation. So when the outer parts of the contracts were being filled in, that could not happen. And uh, so what was happening is that at this moment, like uh, the name of the buyer was showing up on the, on, let's say on the, on the, um, on, on the, the name of the landlord was showing up instead of the name of the corporation that the landlord bought the property under. So we, the system could not fix that. And they mentioned to us that, well, they should use the name. I says, no, because we have a lot of people using the, using the corporation. The bypass situation to fix that was to use on the first name, the part of the corporation, on the last name, the LLC. But I did not want you to do that either. And I'm going to explain you why. Because remember that the system is a whole, right? It's going to work for your marketing. It's going to work for your uh, CRM. So... I don't, once you add a contact and you put it as the first name, I don't know, Optima and the last name Realty, let's put that case, when you are going to send a marketing piece or you're going to send a CRM, guess what is going to happen? It's going to be like, hello, dear Optima International Realty. You don't want to talk to your client like that. So it doesn't fix the problem to use it as a first and last name. So to bypass that, we open all the forms and now they're red. So now you have to put it by hand. I hope that explained it. And believe me, I know that you might say, well, it was easy the other way, but looking into the whole process and looking into your best interest and how you will look more professional, we had to open so you can type the name of your landlord, tenant, buyer, seller, okay? So in case that they're doing the corporation thing, you can just put the name of the corporation there. That's why it will not pick up from the system. Um, that was you, Enrique. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, now we have done, done that. So that's the most important case and everything else is to be out of field. I know that some of you are finding mistakes and I want to make this uh, clear and uh, thank you for your patience because to be able to work on this way, we had, and when I say we, I'm saying actually we, I just, I did a few forms, but mostly, and you need to say thank you, thank you to Christina and Pilar, because they were the ones actually creating all the fields, okay? And as you all know, they're already very busy people, and on top of that, they were doing this part. So there might be mistakes, yes. So if you are trying to put name of the property, which I think at some point there was a mistake and we fix it, and you see your name, listen, just send us a text, send us an email, send us, a, I mean, call us and say, hey, you know, this is happening on this, on this document, and guess what? We can fix it at that, at that moment, okay? So you're helping us to make and find all the glitches and all the hiccups in the system. So how will I, would it work if I have a pocket listing and I am getting a commission check only? Okay, let me go to that part and the question part when I get to the end. Otherwise, I will be jumping from one place to another, but I will go back to that. So we're done with this, right? So I'm going to go back to here, okay? And that's basically it. Let me say a few things that happen, and I don't have any contracts that are filled. But when you have a contract that has been signed, okay, and this is since I don't have a transaction and I don't want to use anybody else's transaction to show you this, um, this is a situation that I know that you might encounter several times. So, and is the, how do you fix a transaction? So, the, how do you do it is by copying a document. Since I don't have any document that has been here um, already signed because I don't have any actual transaction done, 
um, you will you will come to operations and here you will have copy that you don't see it right now, but it will be there. When you copy, that has two options. And the first is with an amendment, which is the first one that is already auto selected. You will click on copy the document and the document with all the signatures originally that has and all the pricing and everything will be there for you to edit. Once you edit a document, um, because I cannot do that right now, let me see, I have an idea. I might be able to upload a document. Let me see. I'm trying to think out of the box. If I think out of the box, I might be able to upload a form that I already have. Let me see if I have one. Where do I have one? I might have one here, and I might have one here. There's a science. Okay. So, okay, now I have, where is it, why do I have it, oh, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, which is refresh, so now I have a document that has been signed, okay, so let me see, and it's all signed, perfectly beautiful. So I go back here to transaction, and let me see if it works. So oh, it was not created on this transaction, that's why it's not working. Okay, the reason why, hold on. The reason why I cannot copy it is because it was not created on this transaction. So like, let me figure it out because I wanna do this. So I wanna be able to explain it to you. I know what I'm gonna do. I put myself as the signee. So let me see if by doing this, I'm going to send a signature. So request signatures. I believe that it was my own address. So Jasmine, where's Jasmine? Here. And yeah, it's gonna come to me. I'm gonna sue the contract release and I'm gonna send an email. So why you see signature request so if i go now i can copy archive or do everything else so let me see and this is again this is what i was trying to sell you so here okay i can make a copy of this transaction so what does it mean if i need to make any changes i have to go to this screen okay i cannot make changes on a document that has been requested for signature or a document that has not been signed yet so i come to here and i they click OK. And now, if you come here, go to the top, you will see the con copy of the contract to lease, okay? So now I come out here, and the one thing that happens is that you see, remember the blue and, the, and the, the blue and the red fields that you saw? They're not there anymore because I cannot edit the contract because it was requested to sign. What I can do, I can edit it. So editing is the same, works the same way as before with a few different, um, different things that we're trying to see with them if we can improve. But you have the text, we have the checkbox, the signature, the initials, and the signature dates, and the strike through when you need to cross over a price or something. The one thing is like, let's see that I do a signature. First of all, all the boxes will come always to the top. So don't go crazy looking. It will not be to go into a, be straight forward to the place that you need the signature. Um, this is the way it works. It will come to the top and you need to grab it and move it, okay? So you move it to whatever you need to be. Let's imagine that it's here, which is not. And I have to assign it. It's a signature, but unless I assign it, it's not gonna be able to have anybody. So I'm gonna put it with the tenant number one, okay? So she has to sign. So after you make all the changes, then you can add a text. So I'm gonna grab it here and the text is going to be I don't know, anything, 1,000, right? And I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna put it here. And I'm gonna add also the initials because that needs to be initial. And I'm gonna have it here. And I'm gonna put it here. And I'm gonna sign it, okay? So now I have all that and I save it. And then you send it back to the person. So if I go here, 
it will seem like, you know, this is, this is what the person that is going to receive it is going to see. It's going to see the new thing and it's going to see where they need to initialize. Okay. So that part works pretty much like it was before. Now, the most important thing, and this is why I come back to this, is that you guys, you know, understand two things. Commissions, financials, property, task, and activity are the tabs that you have to be on top. Why? Because on task, you're going to be able to move forward on the transaction. Like, let's imagine that I uploaded my thing. I wanted to look at the total. And let's say that I already upload my MLS. And let's say that I have my signed document. So what happens? If I click on here and I don't apply it, it will not allow me to move forward. So I come here and I say that I have a copy of the contract's release, which is already you know, executed. And now I can click OK. So that way I can keep moving. So here is just in case I have the, the OK, I did it again, the um, wire, fraud, tenant, whatever, go in there. And now, security instructions, escrow letters or wires. Have I, do I have that? Yes. MLS change to pending. Unless the, the other person did it, you can bypass it. Certificate of approval, if a, look at this, if approved, if applicable. Release and cancellation, if applicable. It's not applicable because so I keep on moving. And denial of contract association, if applicable. In this case, it's not applicable. So I come here all the way to the end. You see how the, that thing keeps moving? That means that you're, going, you're doing well on the transaction. So commissions and transactions fee checks. Here is where you put the, I created, again, for Brickle, I will always upload a file if I receive a check, because I make that deposit in here, that will say copies of money. If I have that file, I, you know, you will see it in your transaction because I uploaded myself, okay? I uploaded on your transactions once I do the deposit, so it's there, so you don't have to request it. And um, so, and here you can put either that, or you can also put the wire confirmation from your client. Any documents that actually proves that there is money in the account. So for the purposes of this, I'm just going to put anything because I don't want to go. So I'm going to put that and I'm going to click. Now, this is what I'm doing to put things in the space that don't belong. Don't think that you can do that because guess what? When we go to the end to be able to write you the check of the commission, we go and check that everything is there. And if we see that you now have something, you will get either a, a pass, your request, or you will be denial. And if you get a denial by, by Chassis, you will have a note or why it's been denial because there's missing documents. Mm -hmm. So this is not applicable. And the walkthrough, you're gonna give it to me later, so it's fine. And the MLS close is not applicable unless you are the landlord, you're representing the landlord. So here is when you go to final review, you have to have click here. If you come all the way, you have a closing in two days and you're not here, you're not gonna get a check. This is very, 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 very important. Why? Because we need to see it. Now, we cannot, I say it again, we cannot write checks that are not in here because they're linked. So for Tassi to be able to write you a check, we need to have all this done, okay? So you request a review and as I say, you know, she will either pass it or fail. Okay, so we're good there. Now, you've done your job, okay, and you go to your activity. What is the activity tab that we have not talked about? The activity task is basically where you and communicate with Tassi, Christina, and me, okay? This is where we see everything that happens. So let me say, for example, I want to say um, I just upload my scroll letter, scroll letter, please have a ready. ready. Uh, proof of funds are in the transaction. Okay, now I know that a lot of you ask me about the phone and the note situation. Forget about it because honestly, we get it all on the email. So either if it's a phone or a note, we will get it on the email. So, and here is always wise. We always have everything, but I always like to put like, you know, if I put, sorry, if I put chassis, she will be there. And of course I cannot put myself because I'm doing it. But if I was like, if one of my agents put me, I will receive the notification too. So this is to be extra sure that the person sees it. 
and then you click on check. And now it's there. So I don't know if I can share this time the screen with you. Let me go back here to my emails. I think that you're not be able to see. Oh, what is going on? I don't want to see that email. Um, email, email, email. Inbox. So if I go to my inbox, yes. Let me see if I can check. Hold on. I'm going to do a new share because I want you to see my screen. Okay, share. So now you want, you're looking at my email. Okay, so this is what I see. When I get a request from you guys, I see this. So we got emails from everything. I get the announcement of one thing, communication with some other agents, but for management purposes, every time we see a total brokerage email is prioritized. That means that we take actions first on those things. So, and why is so easy to communicate? Because if you send us an email separated, not through total brokerage, we, you get lost in the, in, the, in the whole thing, basically. When you send a request through Total Brokerage, what happens is I come here and I click directly to the transaction. And this will take me back, hopefully you're still sharing my screen, to the transaction. So now I'm always on, I'm on your task, okay, which you requested me to approve you. And I'm also coming to your activity and I can see what's going on. So this is why we emphasize, and I just need to be sure that we are all into total brokers. So I'm gonna go back here. Share. So this is why it's so important that you keep the communication with transactions through app files. Okay, I cannot emphasize enough this. Not only because if we get distracted by 1000 things, it's very hard for we to write checks. And this is something that affects us, all of us. We actually, you know, get paid and we all want to get paid on time. So I beg you, please communicate with transactions through the system because this is a priority. It's so easy for us to just click on the link and go directly to your transaction, not having to go and see what is going on and allow some window of opportunity for us to really handle the task. So um, it's, when we ask for something from today to today, it is hard because believe it or not, we are many, many people and thank God we're all doing business. So that's just what I want to say about that. And let me go to an important part on this that I have not touched yet before we go to the questions and it is the dates. So what the dates mean? Like you need to put here all your dates. Why you need to put them? Well, first of all, because they might show in your contract. Like when you're working on a sales contract, they will show. You have to put all the dates here for them to be able to show in the document. Otherwise, they will not show. You will be blue and you will not be able to modify them. So, and not only that, when you put a date here, you will get a reminder a day prior that you need to do that. And that's awesome. I don't know you, but I'm very busy. And if I don't have it in paper, you know, if, I, if I don't have an alarm, I forget things. I mean, I'm sorry for that. That's why I say, do not talk to me. To ask me for something, please send me an email or you know a WhatsApp. And because we get bombarded by so many things that it's not that we don't wanna we forget about you, it's that we just basically are overflow. So you put all the information here, right? And that's it. You're done. So this is a very important tab. Base commission, are we gonna go at the end? So which the moment is now. So base commission. This is what is basically um um the word escaped my mind. This is what it replaces the transaction, the commission, the transaction request. Remember when you used to have a commission disbursement form? That's the form, I'm sorry for that. I had a dull moment. So this is replacing that. So no more printing and filling out and uploading that form to here because it has no purpose, okay? Your new commission disbursement form is the base uh, commission tab. So what goes here? And I'm going to take a little time to explain this because this might be a little confusing. You need to not to worry because before we write checks, remember that we check on your transaction. Okay. So what it goes here 
is whatever monies you receive, means we receive. So I'm gonna put the first case, which is the easy one. I am just getting my commission from, I don't know, Cervera is sending me my side of the transaction. So I have a commission check, I, you know, we put it in the system and the trans commission is $2,000 because that's my side, $2,000, awesome. The only thing you have to do in the case that is a commission is to put it there. And guess what? Done. Okay, you please save and that's it, you're done. That's as simple as that. Now, let's go to the complicated one. <laughs> it's not that complicated, but anyway. So let's imagine that I am actually holding escrow. So I have my side and Cervera side, right? So I'm gonna put the full amount that we receive on escrow. This is the important part. Here is not your commission. Here in commission income is everything that we put on escrow. So I think I put $2,000 at the beginning. So we're gonna do 2,000. And now we need to disperse it. So here you're gonna say, you see here it says credit and deductions affecting gross income. You're gonna come here and you're going to click because there's nothing there. So on this field, da, 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 is going to be, I believe is agent split. And here, remember the beginning, what I said that you have to put Cervera here on people, because here I have to put Cervera, which I don't know if you have, and first of all, it's with a C, Cervera. And now it's gonna say something like, I don't have a Cervera or something like that. You see, okay, I'm gonna put Christina, but it's not the case because I have to put, let me see what happens if I put Cervera here, hold on. Uh, I'm going to put Cervera, Cervera International. I don't know if it's the International, International Realty. Okay. What is this doing to me? Hold on. Cervera. This is the moment in which you wish. Okay, here. Uh, anyone there? Cervera. Uh, I'm going to put it here. International field and save and assign. Okay, so now I have it there, right? So I go back to my base commission and I'm going to be able to now click here and put Cervera. There you go. And here I have my $2,000. Ding, ding, ding. Come on, dude. 2000 There you go. And this is agent split. Okay, so now here I just need to put that she's gonna get the other thousand. Awesome. So I just put one thousand dollars and that's it. You don't need to do, by the way, this always shows a hundred, so don't worry about what shows here because it will be adjusted for your for you. So this is your transaction. That's it. Now you'd allow allocated a thousand dollars to the other side. You don't need to do yours, it's happening automatically because the only deduction that we're making is on the other side, okay? Then you press save and that's it. Now, there's a situation that it came across in my office in which, I don't know for to how many of you happen, but it happens to me. I have an agent and she had like her side, right? We, had a, we, have a, we, we were having escrow for her, for the other side and for the landlord. So. When that situation happens, you cannot add the landlord. You see have here, you have add a line. You cannot add the landlord here. So you're gonna say, well, Lola, let's see that I have here the, I'm gonna have here $3,000 and, oh, sorry, 3,000, there you go. And I have $1,000 to the other and $1,000 to me. So what is gonna happen? I say, well, this is simple. We're gonna go to activity, okay? And we're gonna write a nice note to Tassie saying, please credit $1,000. Okay, Tassie is calling me. Maybe she's gonna make an declaration. So hold on, hold on. Yes, you wanna speak? Yes. I'm doing great, I'm in the class. Are you listening to the class? Because I just interrupt because I thought you were wanted to say something. Hello? Clearly not. Anyway, so 
here you're gonna put please credit one thousand dollars to seller or tenant or landlord or whoever landlord okay you're gonna put it in there and then you're gonna send the note to her okay you're not gonna put it in the disbursement she's going to find that this you know she's going to look into the contract that's why we review everything so whatever we find that is not making sense we will either go into the transaction and make you a note so you can see it and you will receive it automatically so the other issue that you guys ask a lot is the da so here is the da what do you request a da you request it here too you just put a note hi Chathy, i need a da and i know that some of you might have concerns of that sometimes we get delay but it's just because we are trying to put prioritize things and stuff like that. But this is going to improve as we keep working on it. Okay. So I believe I talked about everything for too much already, like an hour. So it's time for me to go into the Q and A. I touched financials, documents, people, uh, commission, task and activity. So let's start with a question. If I, by any chance, let me explain one thing. The side of the transaction that is related to um, something that I, I mean, if it's related to commission specifically, and I have not mentioned it, uh, if I know it, I can answer it. If I don't, I will get back to you because Tass is the person that can clarify that to me. So I appreciate your patience and your uh, good intention. So now I'm going to look at the chat to see who has a question. Question time. Okay, uh, how can I add the landlord name on the transaction, to the transaction? Are you my question to you is, are you representing the landlord or you're not representing the landlord? No, okay. So on the transaction, you basically add it on people. So you can go to people and you add people. But most important, if you want to, if you need it for to have it in your in your contract, remember that you have to add it by hand. So if you're representing, you want to have the landlord, you are not communicating with the landlord, you communicate with the agent. No contract. Okay, so you don't have a contract and you want to add the yeah, so you add it on people. How will I work? if i have a pocket listing and i am getting a commission check only that enrique i will get back to you because i'm gonna ask tassia and christina pocket listing and if christina or by the way if christina is in here i don't know chris if you are because i cannot see other people you can answer that question i don't know if you are i don't see you so more likely no so pocket listing and the other question is well, hold on. A pocket list. Let me ask you this. Hold on. Hold on. I have the answer. Uh, Enrique, let me go back to you. So you have a pocket listing and I am getting a commission check only. Okay, that's fine. So you have a contract, right? Because regardless of a pocket listing, you have a contract. Am I right? Is a question for Enrique. Okay, guys. Okay. Enrique, if you have, uh, let me answer that. If you only have a commission check, it's the same procedure. You're getting a commission from someone, right? So that money either it got from us from the from the um, from the other part. So you have to either gave it to. In this case, you're in, I believe that I have a contract, but I, it's fine. It doesn't matter if it's in the MLS. It doesn't have to be on the MLS, mm -hmm. but you need to upload the contract. Okay, you need to upload the contract. You need to you need to do everything else. Just the MLS number will not be there. So many times when we have a listing, the listing you know you know it's, it doesn't require that you have the MLS. It requires that you fill all the other parts. Okay, so when you get into the MLS section that you don't have, bypass it. Okay, because it's a pocket listing, and what you can do. To make it easy as you put the name of the address put a dash and put pocket listing so we will not be bugging you with the mls in case that we because as soon as we see there is a um a, a pocket listing we will not ask you for the mls never mind found it okay awesome so any other questions carolina after a contract is signed and we need to make changes on it how can we do it okay that's what i mentioned to you that you will go to here okay and you will go to hold on here and you will go to copy 
Do you see that I go on copy under operations and then you make a copy? Something that I didn't say before is like, let's imagine that I have all these, these documents signed and I have a copy, which is the one that now I'm in use. I don't want to have to keep seeing at this country because this is not the one and I don't want to confuse anybody. So I go to operations and I do archive the document. So now the document is archived, hold on, it's archived and it's not in my face anymore. Okay, so now I have the contract to lease that I'm, I'm, I'm actually working on. I don't have the original. So I hope that answers your question. Who else? Da, da, da. How can you cancel a signature request? That's a very good question, which I wish I could answer, <laughs> but I can't, but I'm gonna write it down. So how can you cancel a signature request? By the way, I am going to do a video with all your questions later, I promise. So I was gonna ask all the questions and I'm gonna do a video, I'm not gonna do it live, I'm gonna do a video, I'm gonna upload it, and I'm gonna share it with you, so you we have all the answers, uh, the, the answers answer, okay, the questions answer. So that's one that I have. Okay, Mariana, if my client wants to wire transfers deposits, can I add to a wire to the transaction that has already been created? Can I add it to a transaction? Yes, you can add the wire at any point in time. So you just basically go to the transaction and you know upload the wire, you know, showing that the money has been there. And in case this is something that also happened to us, I have a an agent in the office. She has a client. The client she started a she started a transaction with one property. Let's say one thousand brico. Then we receive escrow for that transaction for that transaction, right? So we Optimar got the money. The money was allocated to that transaction. In the meantime, the client decided that she, doesn't, she didn't want um, uh, the 1,000 brico, that she wanted 50 brico. So my agent started a new transaction, but the money was already in Optimar. So we didn't request all the other stuff because we already had the money. The only thing that my agent did was send a note in activities to Tassi saying, please Tassi, use the funds on escrow for transaction blah, blah, blah from 1,000 brico and apply it to this. So we don't need all the documents again because they already, we already have them. I hope that answered the other side of the question um, because I know that sometimes you start a transaction, your client changes your mind, there is no need to keep moving money from escrow because we have it on escrow. It's just allocating to a different transaction. Enrique, now, can I see or recover files that I archive? That came yesterday as a question. I think that you can basically, what you do is you copy them. That's a very good question. I have not done it, but la, da, da, da. if I go to click here to show, you see I went to archive documents and I click here to see, so I can see it there. How can I recover? So I will click on the document and I believe that you wanna recover because I archived by mistake. Uh, you can, let me see. I love the questions because it puts me to the test. So, okay, what is wrong with me? Oh, documents, sorry, my wrong. Okay, so clearly it's not as easy as to drag and drop. Okay, maybe if I can do this, I will be today a genius. Let me see if it works. Clearly it doesn't, so I'm not a genius. But I can basically, uh, copy. So the, you see when you go to the archive documents, the options it will give you right there. So you can basically copy. I hope that answers your question. So it will bring it up, right? It will be the same. And you can actually, if you want, you can delete the copy site because one thing that you can do if you have copy, 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 copy looks ridiculous. You can come here and rename it. So I'm not going to keep saying this is a copy of a copy. I'm going to say this is just a contract release and I save it. Okay. So now it's saved. Mariel, okay. Now explain the email section from the transactions, please. Oh, beautiful. Thank you for asking a question that I cannot answer. <laughs> I, can, I cannot answer that question because I never use it. But this email, emails sent to this address will appear below. 
you can review an important attachment from these emails into the transaction or download it into your device. Okay, what is more, I have no transactions. So I don't have, since I don't ever use this system, I, I'm sorry, it's wrong. I don't use this part of the system. I don't know what happens. So if any of you have been sending, you know, when you send documents for sig requesting signatures, you send it through here and you receive them back, I do believe, but I'm gonna get back to you with that, that those documents will automatically come to your transaction. But I'm gonna get back to you, Mariana, because um, I, I need to be clarified on that. So thank you for asking the question about the email. Okay, email, how it works. <laughs> okay, and I will answer that question on the video. Next, is the system allows to upload photos or pictures? Thank you, Ricardo, for asking that question. That means that you have not seen my little videos. <laughs> I'm not going to take it personally. I did two videos. No, the answer is no. It does not allow you to upload photos or pictures. But I know you guys, and not only you, but your clients, sometimes it's very easy for them to basically take a photo of the contract or take a photo of I don't know, a check or something and send it to you and for you to, or even the walkthrough. Sometimes you guys take photos of the walkthroughs and try to upload it. So I did two videos and the two videos that I did were unfortunately for Mac users. I'm sorry, I'm not using PC and I cannot explain something that I don't use because I honestly, I'm very lost in PC. But you have two ways of doing it. You can do it from your phone to how to you create, you transform a photo into a, a PDF, or you can do it on your computer. So I will, and I recommend that you go and see the, um, the video that I create. What I'm going to do, I'm going to, on the Q and A's that I'm gonna answer your questions, I'm also gonna send you the links to all the videos that are addressing some of the issues that you're asking, okay? Any other questions? We have 20, I'm very excited because we probably have like, I don't know how many people we have. I cannot see it. Oh, we have 23 participants, including myself, and I have five people asking questions. So that means that all your guys either are very shy or you already know everything, which both works. So uh, remember that the opportunity to be looking at these classes and when we open to Q&A is that we all learn from everybody else. So I hope that the questions of your peers are bringing clarification to you. I'm hoping to be doing my best. I honestly trying to do my best. Um, this is very new to me and I'm very excited because I was never for, you know, doing all these things on the transaction. So for me, it's truly getting out of my comfort zone. And I'm gonna stop sharing the screen so you're not gonna see my face. I cannot see me, but I'm guessing that you guys can see me. And so I'm very excited about doing all this. I really want to help you and that's why we all doing this. And I decided to take over this part. So you guys, especially in San Yaz, when you ask Christina too many questions and it's, her role is to help, but at the same time, she's very busy. So it's not that I'm less busy, but sometimes I have more time. My, my office is quieter, so I'm able to answer more of your questions. So feel free to shoot me a, you know, a WhatsApp or you know, if you have questions, I will really like it because then I, create, I can create a video and your question will resolve someone else's. So uh, three new messages, hold on. Okay, uh, so let me go over the three new messages and then we call it a day because it's been already an hour and a half. So, da -da 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 -da. let's answer. Okay, did you mention how to add a client address? How, who is foreign based? I was told you have to add the country one at a time into the system. Thank you, Steve. Very good question. I'm going to check that out because again, I don't remember and I get out of the system. I'm going to go to the people, 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 and I'm going to go to add a contact. And what happens if I do view contact? I can add a language, add a source, add a country, add a company. What is the country? Okay. I'm going to get back to you on that on your contact so I can really answer the question the best. Okay, let me get back to here. Okay, so country for 
Thank you for the question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you check if you received my email, Ricardo? Yes. Let me see if I receive your email. If you were sending me an email, the last email I got was from me. So no, I didn't see your email. Adrian, uh, 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 transactions review. I don't see the email, transactions on callings. Mm, no, I don't see the email on your transaction. I need to check if that is because you're a sunny agent. I just need to check on that, okay? Because even though that when it gets to the point I see I see transactions, you, did you, uh, Ricardo, add me at, oh, I ask a review at midnight. Oh, okay, at midnight, I was checking right now. So at midnight, probably if I go to total brokerage, I might see it. Total, hold on, total brokerage. I need to check on anything that is coming from total brokerage. I have to check because if it's midnight, it's AM, right? I always get confused with that because I receive requests all the time. I have Terry, I have Mariana. I can see all my agents. Mariana, 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 Mariana. I don't know about that, Ricardo. I have an idea that I saw it, but I cannot put my finger on it, especially because I see mostly my up my brickle agents. But I will get back to you. I let me let me. I don't want to take everybody's, but so so. I promise you that I want to check on your address because if I did, I will send you to um to a DM. Okay. So Ricardo, I send it to okay. Oh, okay. Let me. I will. I will respond to that in my press in my in my other video. Okay. So, any more questions? I have like one pocket listing. I already answer. How to cancel signatures request? I'm gonna go into that. How to, how does the email works? And what do I do with the country when I have a foreign uh, address? Any other questions that you want me to address on the next video that I'm gonna do as after I finish with you guys? No. Awesome. Okay, if you have no more questions, I don't want to take more of your time. And I'm first of all, thank you very much for being here. If you were not able to be here, but you're looking at this video later, um, I will cut it again in little pieces because I want you to be forever looking at this video. And remember that we're doing this so you can actually play this back over and over again to answer all your questions. So thank you very much to all of you. And I will see you, well, if you're inside, I will see you tomorrow. And if not, I will see you here anytime. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all and have an amazing day. Bye guys.